Hi, welcome back to this playlist. We're setting up a scenario in which we're going to require strong authentication to access a system. We're going to require strong authentication for privilege elevation with application and with an administrative desktop. In the previous video, we actually set up everything. We set up a, um, a Centrify role, right, with uh, uh, an application. In this case, it's going to be disk management and an administrative desktop, right? Uh, we also assigned um, this role uh, to our user Lisa Simpson. Uh, notice also that we had a certificate already provisioned into the UB key of Lisa. Uh, another step that we did in the previous video was to um, install the Centrify agent uh, into a window system and join it to the zone. When the system is joined to the zone, now the, the rules of the zone come into play, right? So if you're not explicitly granted access to that machine, you will not be able to access that machine. Uh, and that applies to any strong administrator as well. So this is a great scenario for folks that uh, want to protect your uh, you know, financial systems, your PCI, SOX, HIPAA, uh, and any other uh, reg regulatory requirements, including your own internal policy. Uh, since we're verifying this, we, we need to make a decision, right? So there's two ways I can do smart card or force my user to do smart card authentication, right? I can uh, do it at the user level, right? And the drawback here is that the user would have to, every machine in the environment would have to have, uh, you know, support for smart cards, right? But the most common scenario is to use a GPO, right? So you can use a GPO, have certain machines um, grouped, uh, based on that criteria, and then you can enable the require smart card log on. At that point, you can do it in the group of systems type of scenario. To keep things short, what I'm going to do is just to uh, enable at the user level, right? So um, we don't want to lose you, you in this video as well. So let's go ahead and set up smart card login uh, for Lisa. And what we're going to do here is very simple. We're going to try to RDP to the same computer uh, using Lisa's account. So uh, the UB key is already inserted on my USB drive here. And remember, because we're doing this over AWS, it takes a, a little bit longer as if, you know, uh, than when you're doing it locally, right? So we're going to open, uh, an, uh, um, in this case, an RDP session, right? Um, and um, I'm going to try to connect, right? So when I uh, connect in here, notice that it's checking the status of my, um, uh, you know, my smart card. If I wanted to log in with another account, let's just say I wanted to use Lisa with a password, here's what's going to happen. The user, um, notice that it's going through the motions and everything, notice that it says, hey, you must use a smart card to log in, to sign in, right? So if this was a privileged user, right, you know, you're forcing them to use, uh, you know, a strong authentication method. So I do have the the you know, the, the smart card with a certificate on it, uh, and I know the PIN, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to log in. And in this case, we accomplished the first step, right, which is to require strong authentication for those systems, right? This happens natively. It's part of Windows, so there's no additional software required other than, you know, having, uh, you know, the smart card um, infrastructure and, and the PKI infrastructure. Uh, I'm logging in. Um, Probably the first time this user is logging in, so typically this takes a little longer. Also, um, remember I'm working with an AWS instance here. So we're going to give it some time. <clears throat> to set up the next, uh, the next step, uh, wh what we did was we granted her the ability to run this management, right? So we're going to launch this management regularly, right? As if she's a, you know, regular user. I use a lot of CLI, so I know the names of this tool, so I can, you know, either I could launch it like this. Notice that it's saying, hey, you don't have, uh, you know, LDM access to this machine, right? Because only local administrators have access to do that. If I were to launch the application, uh, I want to search for it. So you'll say here, here it is again, and I want to launch it that way. I'm going to get the same result, right? So this is in the context of an application, right? Let's just say I want to launch the application again the same way. And um, I, uh, MSC. 
right? Uh, I'm going to say, okay, where are you? You're on this location, right? I can uh, right click and notice that you have this run with privilege here. Let me just show you where this comes from. If I inspect the Centrify Authorization Center, notice that the user has a role. Uh, it's not allowed to log into the console, both remotely. The role that was um, added for the user is called this demo role uh, at the zone level. And notice that we know, uh, you know, it was assigned directly to this user. And if I look at the definition of the role, right, I can I can right click and, and see, hey, it's uh, allowed uh, everywhere and look at the rights that I have. In, in, in the case of this management, I have several ways that I can launch this um, through uh, uh, directly, like I'm doing right now, or using the MMC uh, launcher. I'm going to use it directly. So if everything is right with the definition that I created, I'll be able to launch this application, right? And here's what's going to happen. When I run it with privilege, notice that the user is being challenged, right? Again, but we logged in with a smart card, right? So if I wanted to do this with a password, notice, hey, we cannot, you know, you cannot do this. You cannot launch this application with privilege because, you know, there's a limitation and we know it's that you must log in with a, with a smart card, a situation that the user has. I'm going to go ahead and launch, try and launch it again. But in this case, I'm going to use my smart card. So it's checking the status. Notice that it's over the network. Put my PIN, right? And in this particular context, I'll be able to launch only that application with privilege management, right? And let me explain what you're accomplishing here. You're giving the end user privileges to the applications that they need to do their jobs, right? And in that case, you're delighting the, the user because they can still log in as themselves, but you're giving access to them to run the application with privilege. You're not giving them access to, um, you know, uh, as a Dash A account because, you know, you want to avoid advanced threats like, uh, you know, pass the hash, right? So, uh, you know, when we launch the application here, and like I said, this is typically not the experience, right? I am... You know, my smart card is actually here, and then I'm authenticating outside to AWS. But notice that I open this management and everything, you know, I'm available to do anything that I need, right? So benefit to you, you can give people the least amount of applications that they need to do their jobs, but you don't have to make them a local administrator, right? The next scenario would be maybe... Um, you know, our user, Lisa, needs to perform maintenance to the system, right? One uh, quick thing here, if you if you look at the shutdown, you know, notice that no restart or shutdown is available for her. So you may not know all the applications that you need to run. That's where the Centrify desktop role comes into play, right? So it is the same thing. In this case, I would use the Centrify applet here, launch a new desktop, and I can say, well, uh, give me this new desktop, and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to ask for the user's PIN, um, and, uh, and, you know, you have to be strongly authenticated to elevate. And in this case, when you get that new desktop, you're going to be able to run any application in the context of the principle that was defined, uh, you know, for that uh, desktop. In my case, it was defined as a, as the local administrator, but this could be, you know, your dash a account, right? And, um, you know, now I have this uh, new desktop and if I, you know, I even have a start menu here. I have a lot of, um, you know, different things that I can do. If I need to shut down the server, I can. So um, let's just launch an application that we know. Typically, you require, um, you know, administrative rights to launch, for example, um, server manager, right? So if I wanted to, you know, add roles and rights to this machine, typically I would have to be a local administrator. So notice that I can, I can walk through the wizard, right, and add features and, uh, you know, I'll be able to do it. So what are we accomplishing here? We're accomplishing strong authentication, both in access, which is supported uh, natively by Windows, but uh, we're also uh, supporting this in the context of privilege elevation and, and privileged desktops which is only available through Centrify software, right? Uh, I close the desktop. I can actually log off. Uh, you know, one of the things that I have in this environment is that I am um, I am doing end-to-end -end auditing, right? So what that gives me is the ability for me to um, uh, be able to tell what my user did. So, you know, this is, uh, 
you know, to complete the whole AAA, right? We authenticate, we authorize, but if we need to actually see what happened after the fact, we can always look at the session. Notice that there's a session with Lisa here. I can see all the events that the user ran and I can replay them as if it was a movie and I'm able to see exactly what the user did during that session. I can fast forward, rewind, and notice that this is all using Centrify, in this case, uh, um, Enterprise Edition. So, you know, this is a, you know, a must have for high security environments. You should be able to strongly authenticate users, uh, in this case of Windows users, for sensitive servers. Check, this is part of Windows. A privilege elevation. Um, you know, with strong authentication for applications and desktops, check, that's uh, enabled by Centrify, right? And finally, being able to, you know, do capture and replay of what the user did. So I'm hoping that this uh, lab has been beneficial. Uh, a lot of the components you already have, YubiKeys enable PKI to be uh, in, in strong authentication to happen really easy. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that this gets your credit, uh, creativity going.